OK, with the 2020 Major League Rugby season only a month away, let's preview it. And there's been some changes to the league format and three new teams have now entered the competition. So Rugby Union in, in the US and Canada is, is growing massively. Uh, three new teams have entered and therefore they've come up with a conference system which we'll discuss in a minute. So let's have a look at the teams that have entered. Uh, you have the New England Free Jacks. They're based out of Boston. So New England gets a team. Uh, Old Glory DC, so Washington DC gets a team. And Rugby Atlanta, so Atlanta gets a team. All three of these teams are in the new Eastern Conference. Now there is a new conference system. So we'll look at the West and then we'll look at the East. Uh, so it's very hard to predict which team is going to be the strongest team because the amount of new players and three new teams coming into the league it's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, there's three teams that have never actually played before uh, uh, in, in this league. And of course, lots of new teams have means lots of new players. So rosters are going to change very, very quickly. And there's going to be some big name players like Matthew Bastereau playing in Major League Rugby uh, for this season. So let's have a look at the West quickly. Uh, Seattle Seawolves, possibly the best team over the first two years of Major League Rugby's existence. You've got the Utah Warriors, the Colorado Raptors, the San Diego Legion, uh, the Austin Herd, formerly Austin Elite. They weren't very good last year. Let's hopefully they have a better season. And the Houston Sabercats. So the two Texan teams really weren't very, very good last year. They really did very badly. And to call your team Austin Elite when you're right at the bottom of the league is embarrassing. So the Austin Herd, uh, interesting name change. Not so sold on the Herd thing, but I understand with the, the, the link with the cattle industry in Texas. Let's see if the name change and the rebranding helps Austin. In the Eastern Conference where lots of the new teams seem to keep appearing, uh, the Toronto Arrows enter their second season. They were fun to watch uh, last year with the basically predominantly made up of the Canadian national team. Uh, the New England Free Jacks obviously a uh, new team. Uh, it's going to be fun to see how they adapt uh, to basically a professional schedule where you train week in week out, day in day out and play uh, you know, regularly, once a week. New York, uh, Rugby United New York, second season. Let's see how they do as well. You've got the Old Glory of Washington DC, again brand new team. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how they adapt again to being a full-time outfit and how training day in, day out and playing you know, weekly affects them. Obviously Atlanta, Rugby Atlanta, they don't really have a nickname, so it's just Atlanta for me. And the New, new Orleans Gold, NOLA Gold, I think they were very fun to watch as well. Uh, on uh, the most, so They play in a, basically a subtropical climate compared to either on the coast or, or right up in, in the Rockies. So playing down in New Orleans, it's normally warmer, more humid. Atlanta could have in that in their favour as well. When away teams come to Atlanta, it's a bit warmer, a bit more humid, a bit more muggy. So, another goal could be dangerous in this Eastern Conference. But it's interesting that all the new teams have come in in the East this season. Now, because of the conference system, things change. Uh, teams play the other conference, teams from the other conference once a season, and teams from their own conference twice. It's very, very interesting. So, basically, it's too many leagues. So, the Eastern Conference, Toronto will play the other teams in that conference twice, and then they'll play Seattle just just the once and that's a really fun rivalry a Canadian team playing against a team which has got a lot of well Canadian players in it um, so Seattle will play New Orleans once a season New Orleans will play their, their eastern rivals twice a season that's there you go it's pretty simple the playoff format is a bit interesting however this is where I think as the league grows the playoff format will change season to season because there's plans to keep growing Major League Rugby. So there's six teams into the playoffs, the top three from each conference. Let's say Seattle, Utah and Colorado in the west, Toronto, New England and New York in the in the east. They'll go into the into the playoff system. Um, the top three from each conference, second plays third. So let's say New England and New York finish second and third. They'll play each other and then the winner will play Toronto if Toronto will be the first place team. Same in the west. Let's say Colorado and Utah are second and third. They play each other. The winner of that will go on to play Seattle. Out of that, then you have the conference final, so whoever was the first overall in the conference regular season versus the winner of the second third playoff. They play a game, the winner of that goes through to the um, final of the uh, playoffs, where the two conference winners play each other in the grand final. That is how it works. Uh, so the playoffs could benefit those teams that actually play that extra game, but also could benefit those teams that actually finish first in conference. So it's going to be really interesting to see how, in, in the next couple of seasons, whether finishing in second or third in conference or first overall is a benefit or a hindrance. It's going to be really, really interesting. We've noticed in other in other sports, home 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 advantage when you get seeded. Now let's see if you play that extra game, whether that's an advantage or a, or a hindrance, and having that rest week, whether that helps. We've seen in Rugby League a very similar format in the playoffs uh, in, in the NRL, for example, where some of the top teams do get a bye week. And it generally, generally speaking, helps them. So we'll see how this affects the playoffs here. But it's going to be fun watching 
Major League Rugby in 2020 with this conference system. It's going to be really, really fun. It's basically two mini leagues going at it. Uh, very similar to the, the Pro 14 with the two conference system. So they've looked at a professional European league and gone, OK, this works for them and seems to give a uh, mix up the league a little bit and gives a nice balanced format. And as the league grows, look for a division system to come in eventually, much like the NHL and NFL. Clearly, Major League Rugby have a plan. It's it's working. And if you look in at the other major leagues, the MLS over-expanded too quickly. So they're, they're aiming at important locations and they are really aiming at areas that already play rugby union at an amateur level. There is already a player base. So Major League Rugby seem to have a very good plan going on and I think this coming season is going to be a hell of a lot of fun to watch and um, I can't predict who's going to be the best team but look for Seattle to try and think okay we want to be the top dogs in this entire entire league. They will probably want to defend their title as they won last year. Motor Gold were fun to watch last year. They were really very very fun watching an attack defensively all over the place and look for the two Texan teams to massively improve as well. Toronto everyone's picked last year. They did reasonably well in their first season but there's lots of new teams so it's a very open Eastern Conference and the Western Conference is I think more of the same. I think the way I've always did it there I think that the top three or four are are going to be a bit better than the Texan teams, but we'll see what happens. But thank you very much for watching. If you are a North American rugby fan, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Which team are you favouring this season, and who do you support? And for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.